Hello everyone. It has been a hot, hot minute since I have put out a new video. So I figured today we would do a Reddit ghost stories video. I was inspired by Loie Lane's content. Um, she's an incredible YouTuber. I love her stuff. So make sure to check her out. I'll link her below. So without further ado, let's get into the creepy spooky Reddit stories. This New Old House by Bat Out of Hell 821. We bought an old house, my boyfriend and I. He's in charge of the new construction. Converting the kitchen into the master bedroom, for instance, while I'm on wallpaper removal duty. The previous owner papered every wall and ceiling. Removing it is brutal, but oddly satisfying. The best feeling is getting a long peel, similar to your skin when you're peeling from a sunburn. I don't know about you, but I kind of make a game of peeling. On the hunt for the longest piece before it rips. Under a corner section of paper in every room is a person's name and a date. Curiosity got the best of me one night when I googled one of the names and discovered the person was actually a missing person. The missing date matched the date under the wallpaper. The next day I made a list of all the names and dates. Sure enough, each name was for a missing person with dates to match. We notified the police, who naturally sent out the crime scene team. I overheard one tech say, yup, it's human. Human? What's human? Ma'am, where's the material you removed from the walls already? This isn't wallpaper you are removing. There's no reason to be afraid by whoever fights monster. When my sister Betsy and I were kids, our family lived for a while in a charming old farmhouse. We loved exploring its dusty corners and climbing the apple tree in the backyard, but our favorite thing was the ghost. We called her mother because she seemed so kind and nurturing. Some mornings, Betsy and I would wake up, and on each of our nightstands we'd find a cup that hadn't been there the night before. Mother had left them there, worried that we'd get thirsty during the night. She just wanted to take care of us. Among the house's original furnishings was an antique wooden chair, which we kept against the back wall of the living room. Whenever we were preoccupied watching TV or playing a game, Mother would inch that chair forward across the room toward us. Sometimes, she'd manage to move it all the way to the center of the room. We always felt sad putting it back against the wall. Mother just wanted to be near us. Years later, long after we'd moved out, I found an old newspaper article about the farmhouse's original occupant, a widow. She'd murdered her two children by giving them each a cup of poisoned milk before bed. Then she'd hanged herself. The article included a photo of the farmhouse's living room, with a woman's body hanging from a beam. Beneath her, knocked over, was that old wooden chair placed exactly in the center of the room. Next time you'll know better. By I post at midnight. Have you ever walked into a room and found a vampire? No, not the sexy kind, but a foul creature with bony limbs and ashen skin. The kind that snarls as you enter, like a beast about to pounce. The kind that roots you to the spot with its sunken, hypnotic eyes, rendering you unable to flee as you watch the hideous thing uncoil from the shadows. Has your heart started racing though your legs refuse to? Have you felt time slow as the creature crosses the room in darkness of a blink? Have you shuddered with fear when it places one clawed hand atop your head and another under your chin so it can tilt you, exposing your neck? Have you squirmed as its rough, dry tongue slides down your cheek, over your jaw, to your throat, in a slithering search that's seeking your artery? Have you felt its hot breath release in a hiss against your skin when it probes your pulse, the flow that leads to your brain? Has its tongue rested there, throbbing slightly as if savoring the moment? Have you then experienced a sinking, sucking blackness as you discover that not all vampires feed on blood, some feed on memories? Well, have you? Maybe not. But let me rephrase the question. Have you ever walked into a room and suddenly forgotten why you came in? And for our last story, the eyes are watching me, 
by Reclidus. I bought a new house in the small town of Winthrop. The house was cheap, but the most important part was I needed to get away from the city. A few months ago, I had a run-in with a stalker. While I had managed to get him arrested, I couldn't shake the feeling of eyes just constantly watching me. I felt like there were eyes everywhere, at home and on the street, so I decided to move out into the country to somewhere with less people, just for peace of mind. The house itself was big and somewhat old, but otherwise very welcoming. The agent who introduced me to the house had been required to mention that a serial killer had lived there in the past, which was why the house was so cheap. However, he and later my next-door neighbor Sarah both told me to pay the thought no mind. Four other owners had lived in the house since then, and all of them were very happy with it. I loved the house. Its interior furnishings were beautiful and very comfortable. The people of Winthrop were friendly, often bringing over freshly baked pastries or inviting me over for dinner. Get-togethers, they said, were the key to making sure everyone who lived in Winthrop loved it there. Yet after a week, I stopped loving it. The feeling of someone watching returned, worse than before. I tried to ignore it, but soon I started losing sleep. Giant bags grew under my eyes, and I began yawning almost as much as I breathed. Sarah was kind enough to let me stay in her house for a few nights. It was during this time that I heard the legend of Forrest Carter, the serial killer who had lived in my house. While no one knows his exact kill count, Carter, also known as Winthrop Peacock, was a man with extremely severe case of narcissism. Legends say that he couldn't fall asleep if he didn't feel like he was being watched. He was finally arrested for putting up a scarecrow to watch him during the night. Only, it wasn't a scarecrow. Carter had murdered a 17-year-old girl just so her corpse could stare at him. The story gave me shivers, and after I went home, it felt like there were hundreds of pairs of eyes just watching me no matter how I turned. Today, however, was the first day I acted out. I was cooking breakfast when I felt the eyes. Instinctively, out of fear, I threw my kitchen knife, which lodged itself into the wall. As I pulled it out, I found myself staring at a pair of eyes, pickling in formaldehyde. I've been watching the police peel away the drywall of my house for hours now. So far, they've found 142 pairs of eyes in little glass jars. The scariest thing is, each and every one was staring at me.